It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Tasha Hennix, who is the head dance POM team coach at Oklahoma City University. Coach, your team just won a national championship at the NDA competition in Daytona, Florida. Congratulations on that win. It is the sixth national championship for the POM team, the competitive POM program there at OCU, and especially during your time. So talk about the win at NDA. Oh, man. It was much needed. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, we've come close to winning two years between 2016 and now we've gotten run up twice but to actually say national champions has been a long time coming uh, you know as you you compete in different places and i know there are competitions along the way i'll ask about that in just a moment but you all competed at the naia national competition in michigan mm -hmm. and then went to nda in florida were there differences between the two competitions, like the routine or, or different things I know that, that different organizations look for in the mm -hmm. competition? Can you talk about the difference between the two? Uh, for starters, it was two completely different routines, somewhat. We made some adjustments because we had different music. Our music for the NAI competition was non-compliant, so we didn't have to worry about any copyright, things like that. But for varsity, we had to make a copyright compliant version so our intro songs and last songs were different and it sounds slightly different but um in the middle it was around the same both score sheets are completely different there's a little more of a rubric and breakdown of things that are needed for the nai portion and then for the nda version they just want a it's a very generic score sheet so it they're basing it off of what you bring to the table in the full package not so much what is expected of you, sort of like through the NAI. I understand. And, and that makes sense. It's just different organizations. Uh, with mm -hmm. that in mind, then, I, I talked about the competitions over the course of the season. I know you perform different times from the start of an academic year to the end of that academic and, and athletic year. Uh, how do you yes. keep the team motivated through, and, and what, what do you push them through and, and drive them to to be at their best all season long? It's very hard because we both – get um to the point where it's like what why isn't it working what's what's happening why is this not a thing and we've recently discovered that having more breaks help within like the breaks that are given just more just okay we're done let's take a break come back the next day come back two days later whatever we need to do to reset um we have more flexibility the first semester because we haven't fully started competing so we can do more games and more combos and more just not as rigorous structure as we are a second semester so uh definitely talking to some of them so far i feel like if we can add more of that into the second semester so it's not just here's the dance and let's do it 500 times then that might help <laughs> I, I understand. We're speaking now with with Coach Tasha Hennix from Oklahoma City University here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I encourage you, please, continue to enjoy our videos here. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. It is another national championship for the program, Coach, and the first since 2016, that also in Daytona. What has changed between 2016 and, and 2023? Has anything changed? Um. With Daytona or just the in, in general? general? Just in general. Um, I feel like each year the standard of excellence, it, it increases. So whatever you did the year before, it's like, okay, that's great. But now you're going to add two tiers on top of that. So I think it's balancing that and balancing what we normally bring to the table and taking the team that you have and trying to sandwich that in together. That's it's the same, but different every year. And every year it's like the, the difficulty gets higher and higher. So it's always this constant, never ending goal. <laughs> you say that, that doesn't give you much chance to really take a break. If it's always just a little bit more and a little bit more, mm -hmm. I, I, um, of course we've known each other for a while and, and, uh, I'm, I'm a dance dad and, and a dance husband and, and, with all the sports and the athletics and, and the dance along with it here in this mm -hmm. household, I've seen a number of things. And I, I laughed about you uh, saying doing that same dance 500 times, and it's probably 501 and 600 uh -huh. and more mm -hmm. than that. But with that in mind, uh, you do perform at different things. There are, I believe, eight competitions, you all eight times where you competed 
in mm-hmm. 2023. But you all, as you mentioned, you know, performed at games and, and different events like that. How many routines are involved over the course of, of an athletic year? In a regular season, there's a few. This year is kind of an exception because uh, if those who didn't know, our gym flooded over Christmas break. So we didn't have as many game opportunities second semester. So I think that also probably went into, not probably, it did go into why we worked on our competition routine so much because we didn't have anything else to prepare for. But normally we try to do at least two or three performances in the fall, including homecoming and some half times, And then same thing, maybe two or three, including our competition routine uh, to perform just to get it out there before we actually compete. So maybe five to six that's a, in that's a regular a, year. That's a, that that's a lot. And to do it as many times as you all do, I, I completely mm-hmm. understand that. Well, Coach, uh, again, congratulations on, on that national championship. And I, I wanted to ask this. Because in, in every area of collegiate athletics, there is recruiting. And you all, you, know, you, you have to recruit. And, and I know that's, that's part of what makes your job and, and all collegiate coaches' uh, job. But it's 365. I mean, you're constantly mm-hmm. going and you have to be looking for the next talent and the next year's group. Yes. To come in. Uh, having national championship, again, I'm sure helps a lot toward that, though. I hope so. It has in the past. It's been a while, so we'll see. But I think for the most part, I mean, we've gained already on Instagram so many followers just from that, which it's not about that. But because it's a social media society, it is about all of that. So I think having that social media presence, having that presence of, oh, wow, this I didn't know this team was a team or didn't know that they were successful. I think it helped bring light to that. Well, we enjoy following you and following the program there, and and uh, it's it's a fun team to watch year in and year out. So congratulations mm-hmm. again on another championship for Oklahoma City coach Tasha Hennix. Again, the uh, Palm competitive Palm dance instructor coach. Uh, there are a lot of accolades I could go along with that coach, but <laughs> taking time with us here today on the summit. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.